In the previous video, I stated what a confidence interval for sigma squared would be without any proof. And now in this video, we're actually going to prove that that confidence interval would hit our parameter, 1 minus alpha of the time. All right, so first we're going to start off with a theorem that I presented in the last video that says that n minus 1 times our sample variance divided by our population variance sigma squared has a chi-squared distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. All right, so this is what we're going to base everything off of. Just like in the previous videos for like the mean, we started off with, okay, here's the distribution for something related to our mean. Now we're going to use that. Here we're using this theorem and using this for our confidence interval derivation. All right, so what we do, since we're working with this chi-squared distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom, we can draw it out. And if we're saying that we want a 1 minus alpha times 100% confidence interval, then we put 1 minus alpha in the middle. And that leaves alpha to be split between the two tails. And maybe we decide to split it evenly, so we have alpha over 2 in each tail. All right. So now we know our distribution, and we know what we want to have in each tail. So we can go ahead and use QCHISC or a table to find this cutoff so that we have alpha over 2 in our lower tail, and this cutoff so that we have 1 minus alpha over 2 below that point. All right, so we find these two quantiles and denote them maybe chi squared alpha over 2, comma, n minus 1, and chi squared 1 minus alpha over 2, comma, n minus 1. All right, so we have these two quantiles. We've specifically selected them so that we have 1 minus alpha in the middle and alpha over 2 in each tail when we have a chi-squared distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. So therefore, we definitely know that the probability that a chi-squared distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom is between these two quantiles that we've selected is 1 minus alpha. We've particularly chosen 1 minus alpha, and we went out and selected these two quantiles so that this probability would be true. All right. Let's replace this chi-squared n minus 1 with our actual random variable that we're interested in working with. We want to have something with sigma squared, so we work with this random variable n minus 1 times sample variance divided by population variance. All right. So we keep this part the same. We keep this part the same. All that we've changed going from this line to this line is that middle piece. All right. We know from our previous videos that we are trying to like now take this and rearrange everything so that we end up with our parameter, in this case, which is sigma squared in the middle, and everything else on these two endpoints. So that's exactly what we're going to do here. So we can see sigma squared is in the denominator, so we need to invert everything. So divide all of these things by 1. So if we divide everything by 1, this quantile comes here, this quantile comes here, and then the middle is inverted as well. All right, so we have 1 divided by chi-squared quantile with 1 minus alpha over 2 below it. We have sigma squared over n minus 1 times s squared. And then we have 1 divided by a chi-squared quantile so that we have alpha over 2 below it. OK. When we invert it, this doesn't change the probability. So we still have this probability as 1 minus alpha. OK, so we're getting pretty close. We know we want to have sigma squared alone in the middle. So all we have to do is multiply everything by n minus 1 times s squared. So we go ahead and do this. Multiply this times n minus 1 times s squared. Multiply this times n minus 1 times s squared. And we end up with this probability here. So we haven't changed what the probability equals, so it's still 1 minus alpha. All we've done is rearranged things in the middle here. So now we have the probability that this random quantity is less than or equal to sigma squared is less than or equal to this random quantity is 1 minus alpha. So why are these things random quantities? Because s squared is a random quantity. That's our sample standard deviation. It varies from sample to sample. That is random. Um, and so that means that this part is random and this part is random. All right. So that means that we have essentially created a random interval. This is our lower endpoint. This is our upper endpoint. 
So we have a random interval, lower endpoint is n minus 1 times sample standard deviation, divided by this quantile that we selected, so that we have 1 minus alpha over 2 below it. And then our upper endpoint is n minus 1 times sample standard deviation, divided by this quantile, so that we have alpha over 2 below that endpoint. All right, so we have created this random interval, and according to this, it will cover sigma squared with probability 1 minus alpha. So just as we have seen like in confidence intervals for means and that sort of thing, we don't know if our particular, if any one particular confidence interval is going to cover our parameter sigma squared, but we know that if we construct confidence intervals like this over and over and over, that 1 minus alpha times 100% of them will cover the, um, the parameter sigma squared in the end. All right, so our, remember our general strategy is start out with this theorem, select these quantiles so that we have the probability equals 1 minus alpha, rearrange so that we get sigma squared in the middle, and then these two things are the endpoints of our random interval.